This is the GTN Show. Today, we're gonna to be opening up that debate of indoor versus outdoor training. We're also gonna be discussing the return to action for some of the top pros in the female field. And to add to that, we have an exciting giveaway from our partner, Cask. We're gonna be debating what is hot and what is not. And of course, plenty of race news and more. Okay, it's time for race news, and we're gonna start with the ITU World Cup that was in New Plymouth, Auckland last weekend. Now, the women's side, it was a strong day for Kirsten Casper. She came out of the swim at first and then led a pack on the bike. There was about six of them in that, and actually they lost Emma Jeffcoat. It was a pretty technical course that in New Plymouth, I think, and she came off the bike and couldn't quite make it back to the group. So it came down to a tough running race, and we've seen Kirsten Casper already have a bit of a sprint finish where she finished fourth, while she turned it around this time and she took the win ahead of Natalie van der Kay and in third it was Claire Michel. Right, over on the men's side it was Taylor Reed that led the guys out of the water and onto the bike Ryan Bailey launched an attack coming into transition with a 10 second lead over the main pack and then it was Declan Wilson that went through to take the win, in second Sam Ward and in third Matthew McIlroy with just four seconds separating them all. <sighs> Now for Xterra Costa Rica, and on the men's side, it was Carsten Madsen that led the guys out of the water with Rom Axon closely behind. And onto the bike, Rom laid the power down, breaking away from the other competitors to take the win overall. In second, it was Josiah Middor, and then in third, it was Carsten Madsen. On the women's side, it was a bit of a reversal because the leader from the swim, Jesse Colts, could only hang on for third overall, but Kelly Montgomery actually had the strongest bike spit of the day, and then she maintained that in the run to take the overall win. And then in second, it was Adilia Jimenez, who's from Costa Rica, and last year she was competing as an amateur, and she actually won the women's overall age group, and now, you know, pretty good step up to come second in the pro race. Right, over at Xterra Argentina, they had some tough conditions to deal with, particularly in the swim, but Brandon Rakita dealt with it well, leading the guys out of the water. Gonzalo, Talisha, and Kieran McPherson followed closely behind and actually attacked early on to catch Rakita. McPherson carried on to take the win whilst Talisha took second and then Rakita in third. On the women's side, it was a bit more clear cut than that as Fabiola Corona got the fastest swim split, the fastest bike split, and the fastest run split. So took the overall win with a winning margin of over 12 minutes ahead of Anne Sophie Marichal in second, and then it was Alison Backer in third. Well, we had another race this weekend with Ironman 70.3 at Davo, and actually it was a little bit of a surprise on the men's side when South African Kyle Buckingham launched himself off the front of the bike pack midway through the bike, uh, coming into transition with a two minute lead over the rest of the competitors. And I actually saw on social media, he lost all his nutrition at the start of the bike, missed a feed station at 70K. So I think he was running on fumes a little bit by the time he got onto the run. Um, Needless to say, at 4K, he started to tail off, and at the 5K mark, Tim Reed and Tim Van Berkel passed him. It kind of looked like that was how it was all going to pan out, but Mauricio Mende was, was sort of rocketing through, and a 116 half marathon run split, he took the win. Tim Reed in second, and Tim Van Berkel in third. And on the women's side, it was a pretty strong and convincing return to action for Radka Kalbfeldt, who you might remember as Radka Vadikova. Now, it's her first race in 12 months. She gave birth only 11 weeks ago. She had the fastest swim of the day and the fastest bike. And then with a pretty consistent run, she kept the lead and won by about 11 minutes ahead of Naomi Washitsu. And in third, it was Dimity Lee Duke. Well, that was an impressive performance by Radka Kalfelt. I mean, just 11 weeks after giving birth is pretty quick. And interestingly, Torsten Rad of Tri Rating has actually been looking at the mums that are going to be coming back this year. And there's quite a few athletes who took time out last year, have given birth, and are now coming back to the racing scene. And one of which he certainly highlighted was Miranda Carfrey. And she has just announced that you know, she's triple Ironman world champion, and she's just announced that she's going to target Ironman Cairns. But for Rini, it's actually a little bit, not easier, but, well, I guess it is in some ways, because she's got to validate her ticket. So all she has to do is compete and complete. I think, I don't know if there's any time or results she's got to get, but she's got to do one Ironman, and then she has her slot at Kona. But for the likes of Liz Blatchford, Joni Kudamar, uh, Meredith Kessler, who've all also given birth this year, 
they're kind of starting from scratch. So imagine trying to qualify for the Ironman World Champs between now and the cutoff in July. It's a That's lot of tough racing. Going. Yeah, it's not something I've obviously had to consider yeah. or think about too much, but I really feel for those athletes because, I mean, it's a lot more than just the points as well. It's mm. like you take a lot of time out for your child giving birth. Yeah. Actually, sponsorship deals could be on the line, yeah. funding potentially. And that's the pressure, I think, for them to get back. I mean, we saw last year um, Great Britain's Rachel Joyce, she chased the points mm. and she, she qualified, like just it came down to the line, qualified for Kona. But then I think she was frustrated with her performance in Kona because she was so tired by the time she got there. Understandably. And, you know, most athletes wouldn't choose to qualify in such a short window. So it's going to be interesting to see you know, how many of those athletes go for it and how many maybe just start racing but don't chase the points and, and try and come back the year after. But, I mean, it's different for Ironman athletes, like you say, with sponsorship and the income being mainly from prize money and sponsorship, whereas On the ITU, ITU side, you, often yeah. comes from your national governing body and you get funding. And I know Helen Jenkins... Quite nicely, actually, from British Triathlon, they sort of locked her mm. her funding, her salary for the year um, through the pregnancy, knowing that she's going to come back racing. Yeah, I mean, they had that discussion with her, and they say they do a three-month, like, post-baby kind of almost discussion. I don't think it's an assessment. It's more like, are you still wanting to do that? And we've seen incredible comebacks from um, Nicola Spirik, for one. I mean, she's mm. done it twice, and she came back last year really quickly and was performing well in Super League. Gwen Jorgensen, I mean, she's not sadly come back to triathlon, but we've Still seen her. Well. She's running incredibly well. So I'm. it's going to be interesting to see, and I know a lot of these athletes who are going through this are hoping that by, you know, by them proving it can be done, that maybe some of the organisers or the governing bodies or Ironman will start to look at it and see... You know, maybe should they freeze the rankings? Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. And whether, I mean, it's it's interesting, you know, what you think of it, Mark. You think it's perfect sense whether some guys would think this isn't fair or mm. other girls might think it's not fair who've, you know, think for Kona, there's so few slots for the women. If that's going to, you know, the other women who are battling to get that, I think, well, someone's got points and they're just having a bit of time out. Obviously, it's not just time out like that. Yeah, but. it is hard, isn't it? Because you, you perhaps lose form and fitness mm. in that time and actually... Who you'd say oh, two, a year later or two years later, yeah. you can have a yeah. world championship slot. But at the same time, it seems unfair that you've got to work so mm. hard for it. So actually, I think it'd be interested to hear your guys' views. So if you can, drop them in your comment section below. Now for the cask giveaway. And we have two cask mistrals. And we have one cask a bambino. All right, let's take this off and talk through the helmets. Well, I mean, this one I've personally worn quite a lot and, and love it. It's really comfortable. You would not know you're wearing an aero helmet. It's got extra features here for ventilation at the front as well as some ventilation through the um, visor. And one of my favorite things about both of these helmets, you can probably see the visors look the same, so they're interchangeable. But you can just take it off like that. And if you're running through transition and you need to get rid of your, you're not going to want to run with this in your hand, you just stick it back on top of your head and it stays like that. Lovely. Pretty cool. Well, the Casmistra was kind of like an advancement of this. It's got a slightly longer tail. It, does, it was designed in conjunction with the Australian track cycling team. So you know it's going to be aerodynamic. If you are someone to stay quite still in your aero bars, this tail will be fitting into your back nicely. It's going to smoothen out that airflow nicely. So yeah, great helmet. Also in a two-tone design, which I really like. And on that, you can actually, if you witten this, you get the chance to choose what colour you want your helmet, which I'm pretty jealous of. Yes, yeah, so you can enter this giveaway by clicking on the link in the description below. Right, indoor training seems to be booming as of late. Zwift has taken the cycling world by storm and now it's venturing into running. We featured the likes of Lionel Sanders with his epic indoor sessions and now we seem to be getting an emergence of indoor events. Yeah, we saw one in New London in the USA recently at Subbase, which was a naval marine base, and they held it as 20 minutes for each section. So you got to do 20 minutes as far as you can for the swim, then the bike, then the run. And I think the winning male managed 10 point something miles. So, you know, very intense, but it makes it really, you know, easy to, I guess easier to host, but more importantly, easier to compete. And there's you know, something similar in the UK just recently in Surrey, I think, wasn't there? Yeah, it was at the Guildford Recreation Centre. And actually, it's just a really nice way of getting newcomers into yeah. the sport. They said that, I think it was like 80% or more of their participants were absolute beginners. And I think they did it in like a, they did 20 minute swim, didn't they? Then 30 minute on the bike and then 20 minute run, which is probably for most people, especially if you're doing it on a static bike, the 
the easiest proportions to do because the swim's like the hard one. Then the bike, I mean, if you get, I guess if you get tired, all you all you've got to do is sit on that bike for thirty minutes, and it doesn't matter how far you. Yeah, go. it's very similar to the event we featured with Lionel um, mm. lately. Um, but the nice thing about it is it's uh, it's not quite as daunting as going and doing a big triathlon in a lake and out on open roads. You kind of get used to it in an indoor setting. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, talking of indoor, there's recently been two new world records, this time for a marathon. Now, you don't expect to see, you know, world records on an indoor track. There's 211 laps to Ooh. complete a marathon. I mean, that's pretty epic. And they held an annual event in New York just a uh, week ago, and both the men's and the women's record was broken. Imagine that, running around an indoor track. I don't know how you don't get injured with that. Well, 211 laps is much a mental battle as much as a physical battle. So the women's record was broken by Lindsay Scher for the USA in 2 hours and 40 minutes. And then the men's record was broken by Malcolm Richards in a time of 2 hours and 19 minutes. And you might be thinking that those times don't really sound that impressive. But first of all, think about the mental side of it. Yeah. It's a 200 meter track, but it's banked at either end. If you've not run on a 200 meter track, like I've done 3K on one, and towards the end of that, your legs are sore. So, yeah. Well, I mean, typically we the... find on an indoor track, your times are quicker yeah. over the shorter distances. But clearly, as you go longer, I wonder where that line is when it crosses over to, you know, being uh, an advantage to run indoors to being a disadvantage. Yeah, I can imagine indoors. doing 10K. Yeah. Not no, no. planning on trying anytime soon. But finally, whilst we're still on the topic of indoors, we can't ignore Lionel Sanders. He's taken it another step this week, or last weekend, and he's entered, well, he entered both a swimming race, which was indoor, which is less surprising, I suppose, and then also an indoor cycling event. Now, the swimming race, he actually went and, op and entered just a gala and competed against, you know, young swimmers who are doing their normal gala. So hats off to him for that. Yeah, really out of his depth. It's got to take, like... <laughs> Terrible fun, It's got to take quite a, you know, a brave step to put himself out there and race against kids who are, like, half his age, which was in his own words. And he raced to 1,500 metres, and I watched a little bit of it, and you could see see that everyone was at different paces. I think he might have got lapped, but he might have lapped someone as well. But he was absolutely chuffed with it because he took over a minute off his personal well, best. Hats so, off to him. Yeah, yeah so his really swim, it's, and he's not afraid to just go out there and give it everything, which... I yeah, well, then he went on to compete in the CVR Indoor Cycling Championships. So. Yeah, this was down in LA. So he had to travel, which is a bit ironic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Having to travel to an indoor cycling event, which... In a velodrome. It, yeah, exactly. In a velodrome but you're not riding around the velodrome. <laughs> like, why don't you just, can you not stay at home and link it up like you can with Zwift, I guess so. they need to check that everyone is legitimately doing it, so it's all fair. Um, but yeah, very interesting format. I believe there was a heat, and then you qualified for the finals, and he actually placed second in the final. He got beaten by a chap called Adam Zimmerman, who is a pretty credible athlete. He won the US Zwift National Champs just earlier this year, or actually last month. So it's um, you know, a tough competition there. It is, and I think we're just going to see this indoor training trend continue to grow. Well, following on from that, I actually spotted a post on Instagram by Danielle Reef, who spends a lot of time on her turbo and training indoors. And she opened up a little bit of a debate saying, training indoors counts as double? Well, I used to get asked this quite a lot as a coach before. Um, and actually, if an athlete had to change their plans and they had to ride indoors as opposed to riding outdoors, I'd often sort of shave a little bit of time off their ride just due to the, the fact that you get less freewheeling. So, you know, it's quite a hard effort then. Mm. Um, but should we be doing this? Is it cheating? I think we should. But that's just because <laughs> I don't like training indoors. <laughs> well, I think we should make a poll of this and ask you guys. So, should you shave a little bit of time off your total ride duration if you're riding indoors versus outdoors? If it's a yes, hit that selection <laughs> and let us know sort of how much time and your ideas on that in the comment section below. Or select no and you can enter that by clicking on the poll above head said. Well, for those of you who aren't aware, there is a Youth Olympic Games, which happens once every four years, but offset from the Olympic Games. And this year, it's going to be in Buenos Aires in Argentina. This is the third edition. It first started in Singapore back in 2010, and then it was in China four years ago. And triathlon has been in the event since it started. And it's you know, great for any sport, but especially for a sport that's growing, because the whole idea is trying to get younger athletes to aspire to kind of leapfrog from the Youth Olympic Games to the Olympics, but also to really install the Olympic values and great sportsmanship at a young age. Well, to help inspire this next generation of athletes, they've actually picked two athlete role models from the World Triathlon Development Team. They've got Israel's Ron Darman and then Chile's Barbara Riveros. And they've both got really quite special stories. They were picked up by the development team. They've climbed through the ITU ranks and both have gone on to represent their countries at the Olympic Games. 
Well, for last week's poll, we asked you, why don't you get enough sleep? Well, the results are in, and at the bottom, it was 9% of you said because you're cramming in training. Well, I think you ticked that one, didn't you? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> and then next, 24% said family caused the restrictions, 27% can't sleep, but 37% of you, I mean, there's a little bit of a boast here, and kind of <laughs> jealous, say I sleep like a baby. Ah. Well, there was actually a really interesting debate, well, comments going on in the comment section below the video. Yeah. A lot of people sort of, yeah, sort of, I think they were consoling each other. How there was a real spectrum of, you know, some people obviously really proud of how well they sleep and others just a lot of people going, I wish I had more time. A few people actually did say part of the reason for their sleep deprivation is that GTM videos are too good and they just carry on watching them. I'll keep doing them. <laughs> now it's time for a new section where we're going to be looking at things that catch our eye, whether that's new events or products or anything really that's of interest. And we're going to be deciding whether it's hot or not. Florida-based bike brand Ventum leapt onto the scene in 2015 with their eye-catching frame design that was for aero performance for long-distance non-drafting racing. And if you're a hater of the down tube, it could be the bike for you. Yeah, it came with a relatively hefty price tag, though. Actually, I featured their custom Ventum at Kona last year. But they've now released their Z range, which actually shaves more than 50% off the Ventum 1 price tag. So the frame set comes in at 2,850 US dollars. And then the complete build with Shimano Dura Ace and Ultegra and other Shimano components comes in at 3,500 US dollars. I'll be honest, I'm not sure on this one. So Heather, hot or not? Well, the fact that they call it the Z range, I think it's gonna be a not. Okay, last year we had a much hyped duel between Jan Frodeno and Lionel Sanders going into the Ironman 70.3 Oceanside competition and out onto the race course and, well, the battle took place and then Jan Frodeno got a mechanical, had to pull out. Lionel Sanders continued to take the win, which for most of us would be absolutely ecstatic about. Not so much for Lionel. He was absolutely devastated that Jan had pulled out. Yes, well, he's bound to be very excited and looking ahead because it's just over a week's time before this battle recommences. Yeah, for Lionel, being able to compete against Jan Frodeno, Kona champion, two-time Kona champion and Olympic Games um, gold medalist, this is like the biggest race, the best race ever. A chance to see where he's at, a chance to beat Jan as well, so. Well, I think you've kind of given it a bit of a prelude there, Mark, <laughs> but do you think this is hot or not? Well, I think we both agree on this one. It's hot. hot. Right, next up, some newly published results from the Sport England's Active Life Survey has basically concluded that less people are cycling in England this last year compared to last year. They've shown that for regular cyclists, they've had a drop in almost 93,000 Cyclists. Well, in contrast, the investigation has shown that HIT training or indoor training has increased by about 518,000 year on year and it's now at 2.4 million. And Sporting England think that's because people are sort of adapting their exercise to what's popular at the moment and maybe it's a bit of time constraint as well. Yeah, kind of moving with the times, I guess. Mm. Um, hot or not? I don't know, I mean, for me, cycling, I mean, the beauty of cycling is kind of getting outdoors and I feel slightly mm. sad that people are doing that less. Though I am a big advocate of indoor training, HIIT training, interval training, and I do understand also trying to fit around, you know, modern lives and stuff. So which is it? I'm still gonna go, not hot. Right, next one, if you're looking for a new pair of running shoes and you can afford to pay 180 US dollars, then Reebok are debuting their Liquid Float Ride running shoe, which is essentially made using 3D printing technology, which is pretty special, it's quite exciting. Um, it's designed for distance running, gym workouts, and just comfort. I mean, it doesn't look like a running shoe to me. It looks more like, like a shoe you'd wear to the gym, or maybe if you're really cool, it's like the shoe you just Certainly walk around in. Yeah, and I think for that reason, because I'm not cool and I couldn't wear that shoe and pull it off, it's gonna get a not hot. Right, if you've just entered an Ironman, or you're about to, one of the first things you'll want to check is what nutrition you're gonna get on race day. Now, if you're doing an Ironman race in Europe, there's quite a high chance it could be the brand Enovit, as they've just signed a deal up until 2022 for 40 races a year in Europe. So that's basically what you're gonna get at the feed stations. Yeah, and you'll probably wanna practice with that if you mm. are picking up from the feed stations. Um, can you find it in any of the shops? I don't know, I struggle to find it in the UK, so that might be a slight issue, but I think it is great that a new brand is coming through. They're gonna grow as a brand and possibly see them in more of the shops. So, I'm gonna give it a hot. 
Right, it's time for the GTN tribe where we plot your club onto our worldwide map. And this week we are heading to France for the first time. And I like the name of this, it's Tribe 64. Or in French, La Tribu 64. Soissons cat. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, funny. it looks like they are very proud of their roots, this club, in the southwest of France in a small Ney village. Very cool. And they say they still resist the bling bling and the business invaders. I like that. I wonder if you're seeing any P5Xs. I'm not sure we'd be welcome with a P5X <laughs> in this club. Uh, yeah, so they're a relatively new club. They're 10 years old, um, but they have 200 triathletes in the club. Um, they say they're crazy, always <laughs> ready to share sport, fun and fair play. Um, but they also run numerous events throughout the year. They've got no a number of events in the Pyrenees. Uh, oh, that's got to be challenging just in itself. I mean, I spent quite a bit of time training in the Pyrenees and the altitude and it's beautiful but pretty tough as well. It's pretty punchy, yeah. yeah. Um, and in 2016, actually, one of their events became the French Long Distance Triathlon Champs. So really cool. That is cool. And they've got six races for everyone, for adults, children, para triathletes, which is, I mean, we don't see the, enough of that, I don't think, for small clubs, the young, old, beginner, or the champion. Triathlon is such a big sport in France and you've raced out there and I think it's, it's pretty cool. It's cool to have our first club, especially, you know, they speak a different language so they can understand even when I talk this fast, hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like it's not just the adults that do well, the kids also collecting some trophies. Brilliant. Well, keep your clubs and your tribes coming in using the hashtag GTN Tribe. Now for the caption competition, and last week we had a cracking photo from the Malula Bar World Cup with the girls battling through the waves. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit like that. Well, there were some interesting caption suggestions and we've picked out a couple of our favorites. The runner up goes to Jeremy Gord. He says, this isn't what I had in mind when they said a wave start. Great. Uh, the winner was Nick Lamb and they said, my first flip turn. Nailed it. <laughs> nice stuff. one, Nick. You get the cap, get in touch over Facebook to claim it. Well, uh, this week, for your chance to win a GTN cap, we've got this picture from the ITU World Cup in New Plymouth, and it's all going pretty crazy on the podium. Yeah, it looks like they're having a great party there. And it almost looks like it's snowing or a snowball fight going on. <laughs> well, get in touch with your captions in the comments section below. Now for the GTN pain cave, and first one is from Helena Antor. Well, this is the first pain cave, I think, we've had our actual subject who sent it in, in the photo. And doing something quite interesting. Yeah, good activation of the abs, I reckon. Oh, very good. Uh, and with a cool quote on the wall, will it be easy? Nope. Worth it? Absolutely. I like that when you're like ready to press stop on the treadmill and you just look up at the wall. It's a pretty cool way yeah, to I keep motivated. I, I think I need that. Uh, <laughs> got Cervelo on the turbo train. Uh, nice treadmill side. Spares it wheels. Yep, yeah, and gym equipment all around. And a good collection of um, silverware as well. Yeah, very cool. Uh, next one from Edward Pawsey, sending over Facebook. This is cool, isn't it? Yeah, he's got a good storage option going on here with the bikes like all layered up against the wall, which is quite a cool And with idea. a single speed at the bottom. Trendy, I like it. And it looks like a spin bike though, not, not opting for the turbo. I'm just going yeah. for the um, bike. Cool, and then a nice little gym setup as well. Skipping right for warm up. And he's got a nice little um, metal collection under his TV and laptop. Yeah, very really nice. Nice and clean, isn't it? Mm, it um, is. Next one from Stephen Spool, and this is bright. Oh, it is. I like the fact he's actually got a mural of biking, running and swimming. I mean, it's the wrong order, but we won't dwell on that. Maybe uh... just in case he forgets like, what sport he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess today or in here, he's only doing the running and the cycling. Again, a good selection of bikes. He's got four in here. Nice. Well, we can see. And a treadmill. <laughs> Everyone's got treadmills. I, want a I am amazed, yeah. <laughs> uh, Swiss ball. Uh, we've got uh, gym equipment and a nice sort of racking system. Really cool. Please keep your pain caves coming in using the hashtag GTN pain cave. Well, that's it for the GTN show this week. Please keep your comments coming in. And don't forget to enter the cast giveaway in the link below. And if you haven't done so already, click on the globe to subscribe to GTN. Uh, a few days ago, we made a video, did a little investigation into how different aggressive aero positions on your bike can affect your running. And that video is just here. And if you want to see our latest Triathlon Training Explained show, where we talk all things weight, you can see that by clicking here.